Story 1. Okay, here's the deal, everyone. I'm about to tell you the story of my life that basically ruined at this point, actually. My fiancé Summer and I had planned to get married this weekend. We were so in love and our lives seemed perfect and we wanted our marriage to be perfect. We were on the edge for months, trying to plan a, well, perfect everything, making sure nothing is out of place, but then I found out something that turned my life upside down. And not for the better. But before I tell you all about the betrayal I had to suffer, let me take you back to the time our love story started. You guys deserve a cute little background check to understand why I'm so infuriated right now. Summer and I were like two peas in a pod. We had the same interests, same dreams, morals, values, and everything else as well. It was like we were meant for each other, and so we decided to seal the deal and get engaged. Fight us just like the rock-solid foundation that we were based on. I mean, it was everything that our relationship was relying on. We both valued honesty, and we wanted each other to be loyal and quite frank. There was never a reason for me to doubt Summer's faithfulness. I was always so proud of the fact that we had so much trust for each other, and I would always tell my friends and family about it as well because I felt like it was something that I had the right to boast about. But what I stumbled upon I don't think I have the right anymore, because the trust, the loyalty, everything that we had going on just shattered like it was made of glass. Anyways, even with all the trust that we had going on, there was always this one thing in a relationship that made me super uncomfortable. It was my fiancé Summer's relationship with her best friend Aaron. They'd been best friends since they were like five or so, so I understand why they're so close. They are very, very close as they were, but I feel like once you get engaged or married to someone, there's a certain boundary that needs to be followed regarding your best friends that's of different genders. I understand that they shared a lot of memories together, and that their connection was purely for the tonic. But my being uncomfortable was always treated as if it was me being insecure about the relationship. This wasn't even the case, because I was very secure in our relationship. At first I tried to be cool about it, and I pretended like it was not bothering me as much, because I did not want people to see me as a guy who can't handle a few guys' friends around, so I just wanted to trust Summer and share a respect for her friendship. However, as a relationship grew, that nagging feeling inside of me that, you know, makes you feel like you want to throw up every time, it just would not go away, no matter how hard I tried. Even though it made me uncomfortable, and I tried to ignore it, there were moments when I simply could not. So I tried to talk to somebody about it. I wanted to be upfront and honest about how I felt, because I feel like she deserves to know where I was coming from and what I was dealing with, right? But for some reason, she would always brush me off and tell me that what I was feeling was not really that true either, because I was simply overreacting. She told me that they were really close friends, and she told me that I had nothing to worry about because she never saw him in that way, and that Aaron was like a brother to her. But I just never felt like she was being honest about it. Or maybe that's just what I think now that I know the entire truth. But at the time I decided to try to let it go because I felt like she would not lie to me about something else. Who says this? Especially considering she now knew how I felt about the entire thing as well. So we carried on with our lives. We had a pretty solid relationship. So I didn't want anything to ruin that because she genuinely brought so much happiness to my life. She made me feel like I could just be happy, you know. Life just wasn't about living. It's about being happy as well. I didn't know that before she came into my life, but she reminded me about that, and I didn't want to let that go because of a stupid guy that I could not handle my fiancé being friends with. Honestly, people often found us, or, well, would not find us, but our friends and stuff looked up to us to provide them with like advice and stuff for having a seemingly perfect relationship. Everyone was also curious about our secrets, because we had just the sort of relationship that people looked up to, and that people felt like, you know, this was a perfect amount of love and appreciation that one should have for the other. We shared stories of our adventures together, and we told everybody how instead of just focusing on our own wins and success, we would celebrate each other's wins as well, and how we would provide unwavering support with each other in tough times. However, that was soon about to go down the drain. Actually, it did go down the drain. That's why I'm writing this post in the first place. I think the reason is, is it was easy for both of us to get caught up in this mess, because deep down, we weren't the perfect couple that everyone thought we were. We had a lot of cracks in our relationship, and I was always insecure about her relationship with Aaron, and we'd always fight about that, and that would lead us to get frustrated and get mad at each other for the stupidest stuff ever. That was something that our friends did not know, and we were happy about it. No one had to know the cracks running in our relationship. Anyways, what our friends also did not know was that we were about to go through the toughest battle life could ever throw our way. And at this point I'm not sure we're going to come out of it as the same perfect couple everybody saw us once to be. It happened around two days before my wedding. Summer was at her bachelorette party, and even though it's usually girls only, 
she invited Aaron. Like, dude, why is there a guy present there at your bachelorette party? Especially one that's caused so many fights in our relationship. To be fair, though, she told me I could invite any close girlfriends of mine if I wanted, but I just didn't have any that were this close. There were only one who I would be close with and her name was Lillian, and she was my first ever friend, but then she started liking me during high school, and things just got really awkward between us. So now we're on a need-to-talk basis. Although Summer did get introduced to her once and they hit it off really well, so sometimes I see Lillian over at my house when I come from work, but I don't really mind that much. So, even though I could invite anyone I wanted, I was still pretty mad about Aaron being at my soon-to-be wife's bachelorette. I didn't say anything because I didn't want to have another fight just days before our magical day. I was so bent on making the entire week perfect, and I was ready to put my discomfort at the back of my mind just so we could have a peaceful week, but clearly, Summer did not think the way I did, because she made no efforts to keep the peace going. Do you guys want to know what I found out? She cheated on me with Aaron, and that too at her bachelorette party, the one she clearly told me not to worry about because she was quote, just going to have fun and be safe, but obviously that was too much to ask for from her. Midway through her party, I received a text from somebody anonymous. The person was there at Sumler's bachelorette party, and they sent me this picture of Summer in a bikini, being embraced by Aaron, who was shirtless. They were both by the pool, and the hug looked so intense, even I thought they were dating for a millisecond until I remembered that this was my fiancé we're here talking about. Bro, I started fuming as soon as I saw the picture. Imagine seeing your fiancé hug her guy best friend while they're both half-naked. Two days before your wedding, to add. And the cherry on top was that it was like 12 in the ducking morning. It could not be any more obvious than it was. It was undeniable evidence of the betrayal that Summer threw my way. I was confused. I was angry. I was heartbroken. So basically, I was overwhelmed in every sense of the word. All these questions going on in my mind, like how could someone do this? How long has this been going on? Did she even love me? All these questions are making me really, really confused, and I could not think straight at that point. And I tried really hard to do, you know, breathing exercise, and desperately wanted to know answers. But I didn't even know who sent the text. If I could just figure out who sent me that picture, I could easily understand and answer all the questions. But I didn't know who sent it. It was an anonymous number, and I've never seen that number in my entire life. I tried asking who it was, because maybe they would tell me like it was someone I knew who changed their number but forgot to tell me. You know, stuff like that happens. Well, it happens all the time. So I thought it was something like that, but when I asked the person who they were, they told me not to worry about that information and that I should just focus on the betrayal in my hands of my fiancé. Oh my god, did I focus? I focused all right. I focused so well I spent the entire night planning how to take revenge on Summer. Now I know what you all might be thinking, because it's not really natural to immediately start thinking about taking revenge on your fiancé when you catch them cheating. But for me, what she did was way more than that. She betrayed my trust, and there's no way I could forgive her. I also did it because I understood that engaging in a confrontation would probably lead to us to start fighting. And she would give me these explanations that I knew would be fake and false, because there's no way that someone just hugs a best friend like that. But obviously Summer would not think the same, and she would tell me that I'm simply overreacting, based on a video like a two-second little clip. Knowing her, she'd probably tell me to think rationally instead of my emotions, which is kind of crappy as you ask me, because when I catch her cheating, I want to act on my emotions just as much as I want to act rationally. So instead, I made this entire plan that would allow me to get like a sense of control over the situation and just let everyone know that I am not someone who could be walked over. I would not let myself be a victim of something as disrespectful as this. In my head, I was already seeking closure and a way to get my self-respect back. Initially, I was going to make my plan really simple and just to let everyone know that she was between me and leaked the pictures and stuff like that but then I realized that it probably would not be enough for me to be satisfied. I wanted her to experience the same amount of betrayal and anguish that I felt, and if I had to do it through means that is probably a bit too excessive, I'm ready to do it. Anyways, I knew I could not plan this out alone, especially because the plan that I had in mind involved somebody else. I knew just the person who could help me. So the next morning I called Lillian, even though we haven't talked for a while, and I told her the entire thing that happened. She was honestly shocked as well because no one expected Summer to do something like this. Lillian told me how she was shocked to find such a perfect couple going through something like this, but because she was such a good friend, she decided it was only natural for her to help me make Summer feel the same way she made me feel. My plan was simple. That day of the morning, when I'll be walking down the aisle instead of going over to stand at the altar to wait for Summer to arrive, I'm going to walk hand in hand with Lillian right beside me. When I told Lillian the plan, 
It felt so great because it felt like she was a secret weapon that I had on my hand ready to go. Now Lillian isn't one to shy away from giving her two cents, so she did raise a bit of concerns about the potential plan and how it could go wrong. But she also understood the need for closure that I needed, so we got to action. The next morning was spent brainstorming and strategizing to make sure that it would not go wrong because, at the end of the day, I'm also paying for the stuff there and I don't want it to mess up too bad. I just want people to know what Summer did. And I just want everyone to realize that I'm not the bad guy. Anyways, moving on to the day of the wedding, it was absolute chaos. Okay, picture this. It's the big day. It's supposed to be about love. It's supposed to be about commitment. Everyone's super excited. Everyone's eagerly waiting for my entrance, but then I entered the room with another woman by my hand, Lillian, just to be specific. Now that's what you call a cliffhanger. The music stopped playing in the room, it went silent. Silent, everyone's eyes on me. And I just felt everyone thinking, what the heck is going on? I saw Summer running out to the aisle with her dress flailing behind her like a dramatic movie scene, and her face going from confusion to utter disbelief. Honestly, well, looking at her face and watching her heart basically break into pieces was way harder than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be relieving, but it actually was not as easy. Part of me felt bad for the hurt she was obviously feeling. I mean, I could not deny that our actions had rocked her world, but at the same time, it was hard not to feel a sense of validation for the emotions I've been wrestling with myself. But hey, let's face it, Summer's actions hurt me, and sometimes it's hard to keep a cool head when you feel so betrayed. I guess it's all part of the messy, complicated nature of relationships. Hey guys, so the last time I posted here, I kinda left all of you in like a cliffhanger, and I thought it's time for an update, so I'm back. First of all, let's talk about the aftermath of my plan, and someone's reaction. Even though I said it was like a movie scene, the family's and friend's reactions were way worse. When she was standing there in the middle of the aisle, I could practically see the shockwave going from person to the other. I could hear the gasping, the whispers, everything. All of them were so shocked at what happened, and one person even told me that I've lost it, and that I should be admitted to a mental hospital. I didn't really take that person's word to heart, because she's super close to Summer, so I understood where she was coming from. Fast forward to the fight and the confrontation between Summer and I it did feel like I was kind of a powder keg that was waiting to explode. Well, if you guys know what I mean. She stormed into my apartment and her eyes were blood red. It was very clear that she's been crying, and although I felt very guilty for making her cry, because you know, I still love her, I could not just sit there and let her walk all over me, right? Summer started calling me a heartless monster, and she kept telling me that something was wrong with me and that I should have talked to her about something if something is bothering. But that's the thing. I've tried to talk to her so many times and talked to her about it, and every single time she's disregarded my concern. This is what she gets for not listening to me. When I try to tell her that something's bothering me and when I tried to fix the relationship so hard she was out there party and getting all touchy-touchy with her guy best friend Aaron while they were practically naked. So, no, I don't feel that bad anymore because yeah, she deserved it. At one point the entire confrontation and the entire argument got so heated that she threw a lamp at my head. I mean, who does that? I could not believe my eyes. Because I never thought, well, she was the type of person to get violent but she basically tried to tell me that point anyways, and it's gotten really heated. So I've told her she could either stop being a baby about it and we could sleep in different rooms or she could leave. This woman scoffed in my face and slammed the door shut when she was leaving, no doubt going back to that stinky guy, Aaron, I suppose. I didn't hear from her all night, and deep down I could not help but wonder if Summer truly believed her in denial. Okay, I get it. Maybe Summer did not feel that way about him, but it was very clear that Aaron had liked her from the get-go especially from the way that he was so touchy-touchy around her all the time. So how could she deny everything in a matter of seconds? Like, I even have evidence of them in a very passionate embrace that's caught on camera and sent by a stranger, and she still would not agree to the fact that she cheated on me. Me. As if I was clinging to crumbs at this point, because there's no way we could go back to how we were. I realized how our entire relationship has now transformed into this hole of insecurity, and anger and hurt and mistrust and ugh. And I really needed to face that harsh reality that maybe she just was not meant to be mine. That doesn't mean I don't get to make her feel like crap, though, because she broke me apart completely. I spent that night drinking my heart out, ignoring calls from everyone, and I basically vanished from the face of the earth, and just for the moment, I was happy. It felt like there was nothing that could harm me anymore, and I was in this safety bubble that would just never pop. I don't know what I'm going to do now because Summer still has not come back home, even though it's been like two days now. She didn't even come to get her stuff if she was living somewhere else. 
For now, I'm just ignoring everybody and pretending like I don't exist, because I don't have that mental energy to deal with people right now. Update number 2. So I'm back with another update because things never go right in my life, do they? So after the entire fight that I've had with Summer, she did not come and see me at my house or in the house that we shared together for almost a week. I'm not really sure the exact time but it's like 5 or 6 6 days. Instead of her, though, the main villain of the story, Aaron, decides to pay me a visit. Honestly, when I opened up that door for him, I expected our conversation to be loud and violent, so I invited them inside because I didn't want to disturb my neighbors. Our conversation started out pretty easy and civil. He tried explaining some side side of the story and told me how I was misunderstanding the entire situation. But I just felt like he was downplaying my feelings because he was refusing to acknowledge that I'd seen the video. And it felt like it was more than just a simple hug. Although I should kind of get grateful for him. Because when I told him about the video, he did not instantly get mad at me. But he did try and tell me that it seemed like a much bigger thing than it actually was. And that I was just looking at the surface of it. And that there was nothing happening there and they're just two friends who were hugging because one of them's getting married. And well, Aaron was happy for her. When he starts defending Summer, that's when things took a turn for the worse. Well, I guess you could say my emotions that were going through were inexplainable, because at one point I was trying to understand their point of use and where both of them were coming from. But then again, why was he coming to her defense so hard? Just seeing his face angered me, and it brought up all the feelings of anger and hurt right there to the surface, to the point where I felt on a volcano that was ready to erupt. In his eyes I've taken things too far, but in my eyes I've done exactly what needed to be done. I was not going back down to my initial plan. I was not going to apologize for something that I did because I was forced into that situation. When I told him all this, the exchange escalated into a full-blown argument. We started throwing taunts at each other. There was a lot of frustration in the room, and accusations were basically flying back and forth at the point as well, and it was very clear that neither of us was going to back down. It took a punch to my face, and a punch to his face for us to finally realize that this was going far beyond what we planned when we decided to have a civil conversation with each other. And so we decided to let it be, and I told him that he needs to leave. As if that wasn't enough, Jack, my best friend who had been with me through the thick of it, left me a message that questioned my actions. His text was filled with disappointment, and I could not believe that he could not understand why I've taken things to this point. Even so I had let him very lengthy text messages that explained the entire situation up to how I felt about it. It hurt that he could not understand why I've crossed these lines, but the fact that he was no longer willing to support me just made me really frustrated because he was the one person that I expected would understand me. So that was really tough on me. And now I'm not sure where I'm going to go ahead from this because my life feels like it's crashing down but it was supposed to be the other way around so either I can get my life back on track or I can try and ruin Summer's life even more. Update number 3. So I'm back with another update relating to my wedding day drama, because for some reason it just keeps on taking unexpected turns, left and right. One thing that really stuck with me when I talked to Aaron last time was when he asked if I even knew the person who sent the video. Well, because of him, he said that sounds like a really important detail, and that I should not just do something this big based on a video sent by someone I don't even know. That made sense, honestly. Like yeah, I get his point and I also start to feel really guilty for the chaos I've caused, so equipped with determination and a bag of Cheetos. I decided that I was going on a digital mission to uncover who was the one who sent me that text. So, I channeled my inner Sherlock Holmes and decided that the best way to do this would be to track the IP address of the sender and track their information from it. I'm really good at tracking IP information because I worked as an IT guy for a really long time, and this is just something that I've learned on the side for a couple years as well, so it wasn't that hard. When I was doing it, however, my heart was pounding like a jackhammer. My eyes were glued to the screen because I just needed to know who the person was, and I was so nervous. I felt like I was about to scream whenever the loading bar came up, and oh my god. You guys don't understand the amount of shock that I went into when I found out who that anonymous sender was. The digital team led me to ride out the virtual doorstep. It was Lillian. Yeah, the same Lillian who walked down the aisle with me. The same Lillian who comforted me through the times and told me I was doing the right thing. When I found out I could not understand why she has done this, what she did to me. But then again, I was like, okay, you know what. Maybe she was trying to look out for me and let me know what was happening back there, which I should be grateful for, right? But then why was the message anonymous if she was helping? I wanted answers. So I decided to confront her and you know what I found. She made it look way bigger than it actually was. Just because she likes me and thinks Summer does not deserve to have a man like me. So this was her plan to get us to break up. I'm heartbroken finding this news out. 
I can't believe I fell for this trap and ruined the best thing about my life because of someone like Lillian. I've broken her poor little heart really badly. Update number 4. So I'm back with another update, and this is probably going to be my final one. After this, I don't think there's anything that we even need to talk about. I found out about the picture and everything, and I felt so, so guilty, because I basically ruined my entire life based on the picture, and not just that, I ruined Summer's life as well. As soon as I got to know what Lillian did, I called Summer and explained the entire situation to her. She laughed out at me, though I understand that, because what I did to her was very extreme, and I don't expect her to forgive me so quickly. But I tried my best to let her know how I was feeling, so she'd know I was very genuine in the apology. But Summer, understandably hurt, and betrayed, needed time to process it all. She told me that what I did was not easy to forgive, because it had shattered her self-respect and trust in me, and that was something you can't easily fix. I was ready to do whatever it took, though. Aaron and Jake also talked to me about it, although the conversation with Jake was much more calm, and even though he told me off for being so stupid, it never went as far as it did with Aaron. Aaron, well, he was outraged. He barged into my house and started screaming at me calling me all sorts of names, and even landed a punch on my face. I took it all with no complaints because I knew I deserved it. I asked him to help me out and gain Summer's trust again. I begged him, but he just scoffed at my face and told me I've messed up way too far for him to help me now. While waiting for Summer's decision after the phone call with her, I knew. I needed to confront this Lillian. Well, I let her off way too easily, and I cannot let her manipulative actions go unaddressed. I tracked her down like a bloodhound and confronted her, unleashing all the anger and disappointment that I felt. I let her know that her selfish actions have caused immense pain and turmoil in my life and jeopardized the happiness I'd found with Summer. However, it seemed like she didn't care, because she was still trying to convince me that I should just date her instead because she quote, makes me happier than Summer ever did. I got so mad when I heard that. I didn't even trust myself to not hurt her, so I left. Now I can only hope that Summer finds it in her heart to forgive me for my impulsive actions. Well, that's all folks.